I believe in mental health treatment and faith, which can change lives. As a kid, all I understood was that my dad experienced strange moods that made him feel unwell. He didn't live with us and only visited sporadically, but my mom was not one to sugarcoat things. There was an illness called manic depression, she said simply, and my dad had it. The older I got, the more mom filled in the pieces to help me understand what she meant. She told me how, over the years, dad would seesaw between bursts of extended and boundless energy, his manic states, she explained, to the complete opposite, deep holes of sadness that would leave him in bed for days. She realized it was an illness, but felt angry and resentful because dad had never agreed to get help. A brilliant geologist, he simply felt he knew more than the doctors, mom said. He studied endless medical books and research papers on manic depression, now referred to as bipolar disorder, in a quixotic attempt to treat himself on his own. Underneath it all, however, he feared the stigma of mental illness, the side effects of medication, and worst of all, the idea of being hospitalized, she told me. Dad's decision to avoid professional support and treatment had long-term impacts. Throughout the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, his erratic, irresponsible, and downright mind-boggling behavior cost him job after job while mom raised my sisters and me on her own. He drifted from different states to different countries in search of work like a man on the run from himself. His life, as mom made clear to me, was a profound lesson in how not to deal with mental illness. So in 1995, when I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder at age 32, I felt scared, not only of the episode that led to my hospitalization, but also of what would happen if I didn't do all the right things to manage my condition. At the highly respected Institute of Living in Hartford, the doctors put my jumbled mind back together again after days aboard what I can only describe as a magical mystery tour of fantastical visions and pitch black caverns that seemed all too real. My recovery was largely thanks to medications that, although certainly not perfect, had less intense side effects than the medications of my father's day. I put my faith in God, doctors, and science and prayed for the kind of stable life that eluded my father. More than a quarter century later, those prayers have been more than fulfilled. I am lucky to be doing well with a loving family, long career, and affordable medication that continues to work for me. I'm blessed to be part of an accepting church community that encourages honest dialogue about mental illness. And with great hope for the future, I believe spirituality will be as vital to my continued good health as the pills I take every day.